I want to welcome each and every one of you to this complimentary introduction to the personality nodes in human design. This open house lecture is to kick off the final semester of my second generation of analysts in training. As you know, I'm Lavina, and I feel so happy to be able to bring you this incredible information from Ra Uruhu. Now, first things first, what we're talking about today is how Ra first began to teach human design. So he taught people about, you can see here, cross of life. There's crosses in the body graph. And today we're just looking at the personality side. So this cross of life is made of the sun. You can see that sun glyph up there. And also the earth. So the sun above, the earth below. And then we see we have a south node, the one that's pointing down and the north node, the one that's pointing up. So these nodes you can see with this combination of the sun earth, they make a cross, a basic cross configuration. Now, when you look in your actual imprinting in the mandala wheel, it may not look exactly like a cross like this, but here you see in order to remember which is which, you can see that the body graph is facing the nodal symbol that's pointed up. Right? So that's the future, your future direction and seeing. And over there is the past on the other side. Sorry, I clicked a little bit too, got too click happy here. Let's go back. Yeah. So future and over here is the past. Now, when we look at these databases, you can see on either side, we have databases. You look at these two columns of data, conscious personality, unconscious design. The majority of these imprints, your genetic imprinting, are actual physical objects. Now it's important to grasp that this is not one plus one equals two. These databases stand for an conscious, a conscious and an unconscious imprinting. And that equals something entirely different when it comes together. It's a quantum of the two that creates a third thing. This is the sum totality of the blueprint of your current life's reality. And they are differently weighted, as we'll see as we go into this presentation. So here, Kacha has put for us all of the planetary objects, the imprinting objects, most of them that are in that database. So whether it's the sun or the earth or the moon or any of the planets, all of these are objects that are standing in that gateway, kind of like that doorway, creating a genetic imprinting in that body graph. So you can literally think of them as like outstretched hands re reaching out to the other side. Same thing when we look at the databases, one plus one does not equal two. When you have one plus one, maybe more in there, it's a third thing. It's a quantum life force when you have planets that are reaching across and creating the genetic consistencies in the body graph, the things that are dependable, reliable, trustworthy. So now when we talk about the nodes, the nodes don't fit into that category of being physical things. They're like imaginary points in space. They're windows, think of them as windows, into the outer ranges of our solar system. It's really easy to assume that they're things if you haven't studied human design. It just isn't. The moon's nodes are positions in space. It's not a physical object. You can see it's not wherever that moon is, unless it happens to be there. And you'll, you'll see that in some people's designs, but the position is based on the way the moon behaves in its rotational process around us, the earth in combination with its connection to the position of the sun. So Ra says it's the apogee and perigee of the moon's ecliptic. And on one end, you've got the north node and on the other, you've got the south node. So they're just and only positions in space, again, representing here on the conscious personality side, the way that you are imprinted to see in this life. So if we zoom back a little bit to compare that nodes with the sun earth or the incarnation cross, this is your life's work. As you know, we could talk about the sun earth. That's a huge amount. Ross is the vast majority of our imprinting, our personal programming. So the sun 
is part of our solar cell, right? It creates what we call our solar system. So that sun, the heart of your imprinting, represents the archetypal theme of how you achieve your life's work, your life's purpose, the core essence of what you're broadcasting. So again, it's 70% of the neutrino information that we receive. And it's grounded in the earth to balance the light of that sun and manifest your core purpose here on earth. So heavily weighted, weight as in heavy, as in important, as in major influence. This is who you are, what you be in this life, okay? your life's work, the core energe energetic imprinting. So with this 70%, the information coming from the sun, when we look at the sun earth and we look at the lines and we talk about the profile, we talk about the potential of your purpose, the nature of who you are, what you be in this life, you could think about this as the quote unquote, I, okay. The broadcasting of either your genetic blueprint from the physical side or your imprinting on the conscious personality side up here, think about it as I easy to remember. Yeah because we have the sun earth on either side. You have your name there in the middle. Let's just think about all of this as I. On this side, we know it's who I think I am. On this side, it's what we are mm, present and available to being because this is what we be, what we be. And this is what other people see in us that we are not necessarily aware of. So that's the true I. And then we can see that the vast majority of genetic programming that makes you what you are, it comes from the sun grounded in the earth in this polarity. It's always a polarity, right? It's always the exact opposite in the wheel. Now nodes themselves are very, very different. They're very different. That was a contrast. Let's compare. When we look at the sun earth, it's moving around the wheel in this direction counterclockwise. Now the nodes are moving around the wheel in a clockwise fashion. So that's a big difference. And we know the nodes take a long time, like three and a half months or something to go through a gate. Very, very different. Not only do they literally move in a different direction, the nodes, but they're not objects. They're windows. Think of them like glasses, windows of your view. Okay, very specific windows. You could think of them as portals, if you will. It's another way of identifying them. So if we imagine our solar system as a singular cell, and then the information that we receive from our sun is the information we need to be able to function within this solar cell. So identifying with the solar system, linking that to a cell, a single cell. So when you're looking at the nodes, it's not part of the cell. You're looking at the ability for the cell to be in contact with the next cell. This is a, what Ra would call transcellular information. We call it the we, this is where we connect with others. So in other words, when you're looking at the nodes, what you're looking at is through these portals, there's information coming through from beyond the solar system. Okay. For the most part, most people, it's a clear direct line outside of the solar system. Now here we're looking at it coming from the star field that is beyond wherever the relative position is of your nodes. So direct line of sight outside of the solar system, out into the cosmos. That means you're getting information from the outside of the solar system. It's not inner information. It really isn't. So you've got this North node, you've got the South node. These are the windows of the nodes that opens up information that comes in that is not affected necessarily by our solar system. So. Let's go look at the planets. Think about these planets. Remember, remember how the planets influence how we show up besides the sun and earth. These are the accents, nuances and subtleties. They take both cellular information from, uh, the stellar information from the outside of the solar system 
also the sun processing through the planet and then the planet itself filters it giving the planet's particular flavor to your design so in other words each of these planets standing for something earth grounding and balance moon driving force mercury communication and thinking and so forth each of them are designed to stand in that gateway that doorway that portal and give that genetic influence that flavor do you remember how i used the analogy of coffee blends if you were in my analyst training to describe this it's like different flavors to the coffee that is you and so when you add on the nodes these nodes only through these nodes do you get stellar background frequency from outside the solar cell that's coming in from the outside that is not being filtered or flavored by any planetary objects sometimes i like to call this the soup or it's like a road that you're on in those big 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 cities where there's a name for the road on one side and then somewhere in the middle the road shifts it changes same path but the name is labeled something different on the exact opposite side so if we look at this example we have sometimes we have anomalies it's not normal it's not um common it's not uncommon either there's sometimes there's people we know some of these people in our classes don't we who have in their charts planetary objects now here in this example it was the sun earth in conjunction here you can see the little symbols down there in case you can't see them they're larger up here so how this impacts in terms of your design is that the quality of the information you're getting from the outside the outside of the solar system our solar cell is being filtered in some ways Ra would call it a limitation it's also pointing to a karmic fulfillment of purpose which is really a fascinating thing one of the things i'm really curious about fascinated by interested in so when we look at the pure information from the beyond wherever the beyond happens to be whatever gate activation it is this is information coming from the stellar background frequency through into the nodes so when we look at this you can see it's about being up there being this is the i who we think we are because we're not talking about the conscious personality construct and then we also have the seeing nodes are about seeing you see that it's seeing 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 everything is about seeing so this is where we connect up with the we i'm going to write this on here to get it really clear the i who i think i am core essence broadcasting in this life grounded in the earth what i think i be and then we have the we okay on this path in this journey how we see how we connect up with what's outside of us this is where we connect up with the we in our lives the nodes are part of the we so it's important to understand that about us ross says it's not simply a question of being correct in terms of your profile in this life okay you cannot just get to the correctness of purpose he says unless you see correctly and it is only through the nodes that you actually see only through the nodes this is how we are attuned to what we are seeing so here when we look at the conscious personality nodal configurations this is an utterly unique way of seeing each of us sometimes we have planets there that would filter sometimes we have channels sometimes we have hanging or dormant potentials sometimes we have definition there's all kinds of combinations that could change these points of imprinting so you can see now here we have an example exact opposition so what you're dealing with when you have nodes just like with the sun earth it's an exact opposition you can say it's a mirror gate across the wheel now don't get it confused with a mirror gate across the body graph as an example the 36 and the 48 those are mirrors to each other in the body graph itself but the mirror 
gates in the wheel, the oppositions in the wheel, they're always going to be polar opposites of each other. So nodes are an exact opposition. Exact opposition. As the modes, nodes move very slowly, exactly, across the way. So this opposition configuration, it's very important to keep in mind because what it means is that at the level below the line, they are unified by the same construct underneath. So they both carry the same color, tone, underneath the base. So it's always important to see that the sun and earth is an exact polarity, and then the north and south node, always just an exact polarity, as you can see. Now, when we come to three of the different places in the body graph, in the mandala wheel, where we have an opposition that creates definition. This is showing us a very consistent way of seeing, where we never really quite leave the south node behind when there is a definition there, because it's solid. Remember, the life force is in the channels. So they're a very different way, a very consistent way of seeing these three different combinations of seeing. So when you look at this exact oppositions in the wheel, remember that it's going to be different combinations depending on what else is going on in the functions, the centers that these activations happen to be in. If there's a definition, that's one thing. If they're just hanging off of a defined place, that's another. If there are adornment potential, like with mine, that's another, you know? So it's always going to be very different, specific to that individual. Remember all the coffee flavors that combine to create your unique drink. And to Ra and to me, this wheel, when you look at it, I've gotten a bunch of posters from IHGS. It was actually at Human Design Canada that I got them originally. But now they're for sale on IHDS. Of course, all the images and stuff. It's, it's nice to print that image up, up on the wall, just sit, maybe gaze at it, contemplate it, meditate on this wheel construct. If you're a professional, especially, it's really, really magical. And that first thing that we grasp here is understanding the polarity that's built in. So when you look at the wheel, you look at the hexagram chops on either side, Ross says it's nothing but a dualistic mirror. He would call himself a dualist. You know, there's a this and a that everywhere. There's dualities built in, polarities built in everywhere here. So whenever you look across the wheel now in a straight line, you get to see the mirror precisely of that hexagram. Now, don't confuse this again with mirror gates in the body graph. This is a different thing. But this magnificent structure of the wheel itself, the wheel itself is a pure exact hexagram mirror. So let's go look as an example. The archetype is, if you go from the second gate, here's gate two, which is the yinist gate. You can see all yin lines, broken lines are yin lines. And we can see that right there. We're looking across the wheel, exactly across, and we get the yang, the yangist gate, six yang lines, exact polar opposites of each other, mirrors of each other a this and a that. They're the same, it just depends on which side of the wheel you're standing on. They're mirrors of each other. You can see that. So, six yang lines, six yin lines. When you watch, as you gaze across the way at each of these, you'll notice the polar opposition. Okay, the polar opposition. So here in this wheel, what that means, because there are 64 hexagrams, that means there's always going to three, be 32 specific basic oppositions. In the broadest, largest sense, what it means is that you can reduce how we see down to the smallest number, yeah, smallest number is the way that humans see literally 32 different ways. 32 different ways of seeing these basic, different, fundamental, foundational ways to see. Now, 
there really isn't only one way to look at things. Each of us attuned to seeing things very, very differently from each other. The one formative truth, no one has a hold or a grasp on the ultimate truth. Everybody's truth is individual. It starts with the where we be and how we see. What we be and where we be, how we see, that helps us frame our contextual, conceptual reality. Each of us attuned to seeing things very different from each other. So Ra would tell this story about how if he took 32 people, each of them with different personality nodes, and lined them up all along a street, and arranged a car accident right in front of them, and then transcribe, take down what they saw, you'd have 32 different perspectives or descriptions because everyone is attuned to seeing different things. It's part of how the platform of how we see to create our conceptual framework of reality. Okay. So when we look at the deconditioning process for human design adults that come into this, it takes at least seven years. We know that. I can tell you from personal experience, the shift in the following years deepens things even further, a whole different, more radical level as well. It's like you get past your first seven and oh, it's still going. We still have more deconditioning to do. It's like layers of an onion. Now, Ra taught that when you begin the experiment, slowly but surely, what happens is when you're making decisions correctly as yourself, you begin to align to these two things, the correct way of being, okay, the way of being, this is our being, and then the costume fits better. You feel more comfortable in your own skin. But then it's important to see, understand here, also the seeing is a big part of what happens. If you don't see properly, you cannot fulfill your purpose, your life's work. Because it is that very seeing, the windows of your viewpoint, that fuels our perspective or our distraction our framework of how we see. If we don't see properly, clearly, he says it very definitively, you cannot fulfill your purpose. Again, you cannot fulfill your purpose, your life's work, because you're not seeing in a way that leads you to have the motivational frequency that is correct for you. And it's not like you can just decide, oh, I'm not supposed to be seeing this way. Let me turn and face the other way. It doesn't necessarily work that way, unfortunately. We can give you guidelines, we can give you signposts, and it's not like you're always supposed to be seeing in this one way. The mind, because of its polarity, it vacillates back and forth. We can give you the signposts to attune to the correct frequency to see in alignment, absolutely. So what the nodes literally represent is the world around you the place, the people, what you're attuned to seeing in that world around you, how you see the framework of your viewpoint. So the tendency is if you look at your design, you see your nodes and maybe you go read the line, right? Here's a line, gate two, the receptive, gate of the direction of the self, first line, intuition. And maybe you think that's you, you know, the creative, the gate of self-expression. First line is creation is independent of will. But that's not what you be, okay? It's not you. You cannot interpret this polarity as who you are in the same way that you could any other planetary activation in your design. When you're looking at your conscious personality node, you're interpreting the way that you see. Again, like glasses that you're putting on. The personality nodes have to be understood in this way. Let's imagine like you're driving in a car, okay? We're imagining that we're driving in our, our car and you're at your Uranus opposition, wherever that happens to be for you, somewhere between 38 or 44. So the north node is you looking out the front of the car, okay? The front of the car. 
It's what you're seeing. It's what you're seeing. And it's that whole life story. You're seeing your whole life story in that way, how you're seeing. Okay. The South node is when you look to the rear where you came from. So that's where you came from. Okay. So now remember we are nine centered beings, Uranian creatures. So this means that we take the South node and the North node of the moon, and we can divide our life through this Uranian cycle because Uranus is really odd, wacky, weird, has a cycle that's approximately 84 years. When you get to the half cycle that we call our Uranian opposition. So this is the moment when you move from the South node themes to the North node themes, the road changes, the frequency changes. So this is what happens as you mature. Guess what? You get to see things very differently, polar opposite in a sense. Those of you who are older, can you remember going through this? Mine just happened last year. So I definitely remember, remember feeling the shift, polar opposite way of looking at things, your maturing energy, your Uranus opposition. It's not that you radically change. It's that like you can have a midlife crisis, the what Ra calls classic Iranian midlife crisis. It doesn't bring a crisis physically. It's a crisis in terms of what you're seeing because the theme of what you see is shifting. So all of a sudden, everything alters. Now, it's not overnight like I snapped my fingers, but relative to the life process, you know, the Uranus opposition is strongest the seven years around that date. So you can start to feel it. You feel the shift. I get most of my clients around this time or their Saturn or their Chiron cycle. So although you can be in exactly the same world, when you come to your Uranus opposition, you will see everything very differently. Remember it's a polar opposition. This is why your opposition brings a crisis. Okay, the crisis is that everything you see is shifting dramatically, really dramatically. So seeing is the foundation for the mind. Okay, seeing is the foundation for the conceptualization process of your mind. We're only talking about the personality construct, okay, on this day and time. The great dilemma of what it is to be in a dualistic construct. Now, this is something that you may not have come across before because what we're looking at here in being a dualistic construct, this conscious personality and unconscious design, there is not a balance. You can see that Katja made this smaller and made the design bigger. Okay. There's not balance here as far as the imprinting is concerned because personality crystals do not have as much impact as design crystals. There's no balance here. They are not equal. Just because there are two calculations on either side of the body graph doesn't mean that they're equal. They're just not, they're simply not equal. If there were, they were in balance, Ross says that we'd be dead and they're not in balance because we are alive, obviously, aren't we? And they're particularly out of balance in the way in which we're configured, he says, because our form dominates. The body is the life. The body, it's one precious life, this one precious experience. It doesn't reincarnate life after life like the personality crystal. Not in the same way. It, it gets recycled. Every single time we, we are incarnate with a new vehicle, a new form. So this one precious life, the form dominates whatever it happens to be for each of you. When you look down at your body graph at the split view, look at the form. I can remember in the beginning of my human design experiment, really, really going through everything with a fine tooth comb. Yeah. Reading everything, trying to understand it, trying to grok it, grasp it wondering about this and that. And it's not like I did it on purpose. I just really identified consciously with the conscious personality imprint, that blueprint. Didn't know this about the form. 
somebody I remember you know, being very vociferous or active on social media at the beginning of my experiment and sharing about all kinds of things that I'm learning. And somebody commented on my post, well, you're always inspired. And I'm like, what are you talking about? At that point, you know, I was thinking they were talking about the head center. Yeah, the function is inspiration. I'm like, always inspired? I'm like, raw. I've got a 61 hanging out here. It's undefined. I don't know what you're talking about. I forgot that the 1-8 was called the channel of inspiration, design of a creative role model. When I started my deconditioning experiment, I couldn't speak without a lump in my throat, especially when it was meaningful or I was emotional in front of a group, what have you. I would just shut down, close down my throat, lump in my throat, hard to speak, tears spring to my eyes, always feeling extremely, incredibly nervous. I didn't know what inspiration really felt like, not at that place. But now that I'm on the other side of the seven years, my first seven years deconditioning process, it feels like something's living through me that my mind doesn't necessarily identify with. But I can recognize after the fact or as it's happening that something's moving through me. This energetic shift, this oftentimes I'm sitting in my office here with my eyes closed, the light is not on. I'm more lean towards the dark as far as my primary health system. The bright lights, they, they hurt my eyes. They don't feel good. And also there's a lot of fives over here. Don't really want to be seen or projected upon. And my internet sucks. So that whole combination of things, I feel comfortable here, waving my arms, eyes closed, speaking to you from this inherent knowing from within this presence of being, this glow behind my sternum that feels clear or not. The tingles happen all the way down my arms. I can feel it in my hands when I speak in this way. It's a very different experience than when I'm in my daytime normal reality, just experiencing life, imagining what could be, fantasizing, you know, sharing my emotions. That's a very, very different thing. So they're not imbalanced to the point. Our form dominates. Now, what Ra says about this is that you're only as intelligent as your brain system allows. This is your brain where the personality, sorry, the design crystal sits. Okay, so let's all imagine that the design crystal genetic imprint represents our computer's hardware. Okay, their physical form is the computer hardware. If we went to the store, let's go to Best Buy. Okay, we run a Best Buy, we buy this physical hardware. That's our form. Okay, we pick it up, we put it into our cart. It's heavy, isn't it? Depends on what you're buying. Some apples are really light nowadays, but let's imagine it's a giant uh, tower desktop PC. Heavy crystal imprinting. This is our body, our physical body. Now the software that runs on the hardware, that's personality crystal imprinting. Light, yeah, when you buy the software, it's a plastic, big piece of plastic potentially with another plasticky thing inside that's very light comparatively. That's who we think we are. And it's in a marriage for life to this body. Marriage for life, that heavy thing compared to this little light thing. When you imagine picking up the software you just got at the store, you could just toss it in your purse or your backpacks, it's, it's no big deal. You gotta carry your hardware with both hands if you get a big old tower, right? So now, without the appropriate hardware, this is your hardware, with your hardware not working correctly, the software won't work. It won't work well, or maybe it even won't run, okay? Software is a very different thing identifying with who I think I am, the programming that runs on top of the hardware. Bigger, smaller. Has one life experience, reincarnates life after life after life. 64,000 different lives, approximately, potentially, each of you have had in different forms, in different vehicles since the beginning of time. Very rarely do these soul 
hmm, crystals, the personality crystals, exterminate or extinguish, you could say. So it's a very different thing. So what this means, keep in mind that we're talking here is the way the personality or who you think you are looks at the world. Okay, how your personality is designed to think about looking at what it's looking at. So he's saying in this a, a different way, the way you think your mind sees the world is the personality nodal imprinting. And this is the key to comprehending this aspect of the human design system knowledge. This concept applies to your personality construct. So if you continue on in this course, you are going to be learning how to see what is good for your mind to see and how to guide your clients to pay attention to the things they are designed to see. Make sense? This is the way you think your mind sees the world. Okay. How you see your genetic blueprint, the glasses you wear. Let's see, have I gone through all of my normal, for those of you who have been with me a while, any other, or if, even if you're new to me, any other ways that you can describe this as an analogy. I've, I brought up the hardware, the software, I brought up, um, coffee flavors, soup that you're swimming in. Oh, one more thing I can remember. So I usually say is because people get confused. Well, what do you mean? This isn't who I be, you know, if it's in a channel configuration, it's a strength in you of how you see. Okay. Part of that strength and relational dynamic with another aspect of yourself yeah, on the planets, the coffee flavors, or if it's in channel by itself, 4323, 3420, 3740, and then whatever is in combination with that planet. Okay. So the nodes, the way that you see, we can imagine it like we are fish swimming in the sea. If a fish, not flying fish, not dolphins, no fish, just imagine no fish that can jump out of the ocean. All the fishies that are hanging around down at the bottom. Frogfish. Do you know what a frogfish is? I freaking love them. They've got this little angly hook in front of their face and they're really freaking weird. They look like frogs. They swallow with their mouths, giant gulp in, and it squirts out from behind their front legs. Was it front, front legs? Yeah. So weird. <laughs> and that's how they swim or they walk sometimes. Okay. So a frogfish has no idea it's in water because that is its contextual reality. That's your nodes. That's my other way of describing it. Is everybody very clear about nodes now? I want to make sure how to guide your clients to pay attention to these things that they are designed to look at, not the things that distract them away from fulfilling their life's work. These are heavy, heavy hitters as far as the aspects of what you're going to analyze, especially when you get to incarnation crosses and to cycles. It's a big deal. Okay. So we really want to make sure we go uh, in all in on these nodes of the moon. So again, Ra says about looking at your conscious personality nodes that if that's your seeing, you need to see that. I mean, that's the whole point for your mind, your mind to work properly for your gift, whatever your gift happens to be to come out. It will resonate through that way of seeing because what you see is the best is where you can apply your talents, your gifts, your processes. What you see the best is where you can apply your talents, your gifts, your processes. There we go. That is all of the information that we have here on this presentation. Anybody want to uh, share as far as how you understand the nodes? Anything else? Oh, one more. Actually, I use it on the, on the body side. The body side, I describe how Let's imagine you go or you're driving and you're going through uh, a forest, you know, all these trees. I love it when you drive through the trees that are hanging over the road and it feels like a tunnel. 
And then all of a sudden you break out of the forest and now you're in fields. I love those tall fields of grass that are dry and they're just waving in the wind. They have that. So that's how it is as far as it's different. It's the same road, but it's different. It's very, very different. I'm just seeing these natural metaphors like between place and perception. So think of yourself on top of a mountain and seeing the wind blow through the reeds and seeing a rabbit cross your path and see a hawk in the sky. And then picture yourself at the beach and seeing the ocean waves and maybe a dolphin jump mm -hmm. or even the sun setting on the water or a seal mm -hmm. pop up mm -hmm. and then picture yourself in the forest and hearing the crunch of twigs underneath your feet and seeing a deer through the trees, seeing the sunlight pour through the trees. These are like experiences of being in a particular place, but seeing through a lens of perception that is contextual, that's related to the place, mm -hmm. but is purely your own in mm -hmm. context of that place, if that makes sense. Absolutely. And if it helps. Oh, I loved it. Yeah. And if we can add on just a little bit more flavoring, because everybody in this, um, for the most part, all of you, I, I recognize, and you can take this, you can handle it. If we now just add on one more layer and piece, which is really e easy to do, the right, as an example here with Ra, it's about seeing everything related to that window of his viewpoint. So. Um, the framework is very much about seeing all the peripheral data, whereas I'm completely opposite. The way that I see is I get really fixated and pointed in on one aspect of what I'm looking at. So I go, I go down into, you know, very specific things. So that's another thing that we can, we can add on as a layering. You could knowledge. hear that in my description. We're the same way. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. <laughs> you were very specific. It, yes. it reminded me when you were talking, I love when we go hiking, I take my camera or, you know, phone now. Um, and I'm always taking pictures. I like, I really want to grasp and capture. And my husband's exactly opposite. He hates pictures because they never give you the full beauty and majesty of what you're looking at. So he can't stand it, but I, I love it. So it's another way of seeing. Mm -hmm. Because they capture in a snapshot that whole beauty and majesty, but I get it, both are right. <laughs> mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah, it's not about good, bad, right, wrong. It's just, what do you prefer to look at is another way of attuning to this. So stage upon which your life is set, what you're automatically, and when you're operating in alignment, designed to uh, attune to when you're, where you be and, and how you're seeing where you be. That feels like a good place to end all of this. Thank you so much, each of you, for all of your wonderful contributions, questions, sharing. It's really a pleasure and an honor and a gift to be here with you. I'm so excited. Thank you, Kacha, for everything that you did here. Really, really want to thank you. And I'll see you whenever it is that you come next into one of these courses groups. All right, my friends. Thanks so much. Bye for now.